On the 28th of October, 2025, gravitational wave detectors on three continents simultaneously received a signal, a scream through space-time. Two newborn black holes, just born from the violent death of their predecessor stars, sent their first messages into the universe. But what astrophysicists discovered in the following hours fit no known model. One of these black holes, according to everything we know about stellar evolution, should never be able to exist. Welcome to a story about the darkest objects in the universe and the brightest discovery of our time. Before we begin, do you believe that black holes are truly black? Or are they hiding something we don't yet understand? Write your thoughts in the comments. Your perspective interests me. Let us remember 2015, the first direct detection of gravitational waves, a milestone for humanity. Two merging black holes, one and a half billion light years away, created waves in space-time that moved detectors here on Earth by less than one thousandth of a proton's diameter. We had learned to listen to what the universe whispers to us, but what we heard back then were the last breaths of old, massive black holes, objects that had already existed for billions of years. Their story was nearly over. Their merger was the final punctuation of a cosmic novel. Today, 10 years later, we hear something completely different. The first scream. The gravitational waves detected on October 28th did not come from merging black holes. They came from their birth. Two stars, each about 20 to 30 solar masses, collapsed almost simultaneously in a distant galaxy. Their cores imploded, and in fractions of a second, they became the densest objects the universe knows. But here begins the mystery. Black holes don't just form randomly, there are rules, physical laws that determine which stars can become black holes and which cannot. The so-called pair instability supernova gap. Between 55 and 120 solar masses, there is a forbidden zone. Stars in this mass range cannot form black holes. They explode completely. Their core is destroyed by a process we call pair instability supernova. At extremely high temperatures, photons transform into particle-antiparticle pairs. The pressure collapses. The star explodes. Nothing remains. No black hole. No neutron star. Only dust and gas scattered into interstellar space. So, states the theory. So it is written in every astrophysics textbook. Yet one of the black holes whose birth we heard on October 28th lies precisely within this gap. It has a mass of approximately 85 solar masses. It should not exist. Do you understand what this means? This is not a small deviation, not a measurement error. The detectors, LIGO in the United States, Virgo in Italy, CAGRA in Japan, they all confirm the measurement. The signature is unambiguous. The calculations are verified. We are seeing an object that, according to our most fundamental models of stellar evolution, is impossible. Three explanations are on the table. The first, our models about pair instability supernovae are wrong. Perhaps there are processes inside massive stars that we don't yet understand, processes that allow the core to survive despite pair instability, magnetic fields of previously unimaginable strength, rotation effects we've underestimated. But that would mean we must rewrite decades of research on stellar evolution, the second explanation is even more fascinating, hierarchical merger. Imagine this, the black hole we observe is itself the product of an earlier merger. Two smaller black holes, each perhaps 40 solar masses, merged into an object of 85 solar masses. This newly formed black hole was then ejected, and precisely at this moment, as it stabilized from the collision, we caught its birth cry. But then this process would have to occur incredibly fast. Black holes that merge emit gravitational waves for millions of years before they unite. That we would capture precisely the moment afterwards, the probability is vanishingly small. Unless, and this is the third possibility, unless such events are more frequent than we thought, much more frequent. This is where research facilities go silent. Because if this third explanation is correct, if hierarchical mergers are indeed so frequent that we can randomly capture one, then that means something fundamental about the structure of the universe it means that black holes are not the isolated monsters we believe them to be. It means they exist in dense environments, in globular clusters, in the centers of galaxies, in regions where black holes encounter each other, dance, merge, again and again, generation after generation. And as they do this, they grow. With each merger, a black hole becomes more massive. It emits gravitational waves, losing energy in the process but gaining mass. Over cosmic timescales, stellar black holes of 10 solar masses could become intermediate mass black holes of 10,000 solar masses. And eventually, supermassive black holes. The monsters at the centers of galaxies. 
the objects whose origin has puzzled us for decades. We've always wondered, how can black holes of billions of solar masses form so early in the universe? The universe is only 14 billion years old. That's barely enough time for a black hole to become so massive through normal accretion. But if they grow through mergers, if each generation of black holes creates the next, then suddenly everything makes sense. But there's something else, something the researchers initially didn't mention because they couldn't believe what they saw themselves. The second black hole. It has unusual properties. Its rotation is wrong. Black holes born from collapsing stars should rotate rapidly. The star's angular momentum is conserved, compressed into a tiny space. The black hole should spin at a significant fraction of the speed of light. This one doesn't. It barely rotates, as if something decelerated its angular momentum before it fully collapsed. There are only a few processes that could accomplish this. Magnetic fields that transport energy and angular momentum outward, or, and this is more speculative, interactions with dark matter. Yes, you heard that correctly, dark matter. If a star collapses in a region of high dark matter density, the dark matter could interact with the collapsing core, it could extract energy, it could slow the rotation. We have never seen a direct signature of dark matter in an astrophysical event. Until now, perhaps. But here's what's truly astonishing. This idea is not new. 1979. A physicist named William Press published a theoretical paper on dark matter capture in collapsing stars. He calculated how dark matter could accumulate in the center of a dying star and influence its collapse. The paper was barely cited 12 times in 45 years. It was forgotten because we had no way to test it. Gravitational wave detectors didn't exist yet. We could only theorize, not observe. But now with the data from October 28th, researchers are digging up this paper again. They're reading it anew and they're discovering the predictions fit. For 44 years, the answer lay in a library, unnoticed. This is the silent tragedy of science. Not that we don't find answers, but that we sometimes find them before we ask the right question. The analysis is still ongoing. Teams around the world are working on the data. They're modeling, simulating, comparing. In the coming months, we'll learn more. But one thing is already certain. We haven't just observed two black holes. We've caught a glimpse of the hidden machinery of the cosmos, of the way the universe creates its most massive structures, of the network of mergers that extends across cosmic timescales. And perhaps, perhaps, we've seen the first indirect evidence that dark matter doesn't just act gravitationally, but actively participates in the most violent events in the universe. Imagine you're standing under the night sky. You see thousands of stars. Some will die in millions of years. Some are already dead, and their light is still on its way to us. And somewhere out there, in a galaxy whose light has just reached our telescopes, two black holes were born long ago. They screamed. And today, after billions of years traveling through the fabric of space-time, that scream reached us. We heard. We understood. And we're beginning to comprehend that the universe consists not only of light and darkness, but of something in between, of moments of transition, of births and deaths, of screams that echo through eternity. The story of black holes is far from over. It has only just begun. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Science evolves every day, and I'll keep you updated. Until next time, stay curious.